Hi, my name is Ray Sharling. I'm a full-time Twitch streamer. And in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what you need inside a streaming PC. I'm going to try and not mention specific products because I want this guy to be useful no matter when you're watching it. But in the description below, I am gonna populate it with a couple of products which I use myself. I'm gonna begin by describing the hierarchy of PC components and exactly what you need them for and what their purpose is. First of all, the most important is your graphics card or your GPU. This is the component responsible for giving you those graphics when you are gaming, but there's something specific that you need to look at and pay attention to when it comes to building a PC for streaming. When you are playing video games, your graphics card renders the graphics, but there's something specific that the PC does before it delivers it to Twitch, and that's encoding. You always encode something when you're streaming. You're basically sending your data over to the streaming software, whether it be Twitch or Mixer or DLive. You're always encoding your data. Both AMD and NVIDIA have this option, but NVIDIA's encoding option, NVENC, tends to be the most popular one and something that you've probably heard before. So when it comes to using streaming softwares like OBS, Streamlabs OBS or XSplit, you'll see it's probably most optimized with NVENC. That being said, make sure you do not stream through your CPU, which is X264. Do not stream through that format because that is significantly going to decrease your streaming experience for yourself and for your viewers because it puts way too much strain on your CPU. So unless you have the latest range of CPUs by Intel or AMD, I wouldn't bother encoding through your CPU. The bottom line is make sure you put a little bit more aside in your budget for your graphics card. Moving on to the CPU, that can be seen as something that's equally important because it's the component responsible for handling tasks on your computer, like your streaming software, like your video game. It is super vital that it's able to handle those core programs that your PC is running, which is why calls and threads come into play, which you might have heard before. Famously, the Ryzen CPU is great for a budget streaming system because it has so many cores and threads compared to its competitors. That means it can share the pressure that any of the programs has put on the PC. So it tends to be more of a popular option for people who are streaming. In simple terms, the more cores and threads you have, the better quality your stream is going to be because you can play your game at higher quality and you're being able to push that quality onto your streaming software because you're using NVENC or the AMD equivalent to encode that data to your streaming platform. Next up is your motherboard, which a lot of people tend to forget and cheap out on, but this is significantly going to restrict your features going forward and decrease your upgradability when it comes to your streaming quality. And what I mean by that is that you want to get a motherboard that has a few PCIe slots because having those free means that in the future you can install a capture card allowing you to capture your console gameplay, be that the Xbox, the Nintendo Switch or a PlayStation. It also gives you the option to use a high quality camera that uses a HDMI output so that you can show your face in better quality for your stream. And also something that might be extremely important for streaming is PCIe SSDs. An SSD is a solid state drive and it performs significantly faster than a hard drive. So having your OS, your streaming software and your most played game loaded onto your SSD is going to increase your load up times like that. It's super important and I would really recommend getting a PCIe SSD if you are a streamer. Something else you wanna know on your motherboard as well is the USB slots. You don't wanna limit yourself straight away to six USB slots for the sake of 20 quid. What you'll find when you do get into streaming, if you're not already filled with streaming accessories on your setup, is that a lot of streaming peripherals require USBs. Things like your stream deck, your capture card, even your webcam takes up a USB. You're best off just putting a little bit extra to the side and investing in a motherboard that has a few more USBs than the standard. You'll save yourself a lot of time. Money. Trust me. Moving on to RAM. Now, this is really important that you purchase smartly and buy RAM that's been built to work alongside your motherboard and CPU if you're buying an AMD CPU. 
If you wanna see what I've personally gone for, there's a video on this channel where I upgrade my streaming platform where I take my motherboard out of my PC and replace it with an AMD Ryzen 3800X, a ROG Strix X570F motherboard, and 16 gigabytes of Corsair 3600 RAM because it's AMD certified, which means it's gonna work at the exact speed that my motherboard and CPU work at as well. So it's just, better and more in sync with each other. Storage wise, a big hard drive is great to store a massive chunk of your video games as well as any streaming assets that you have. But like I said earlier in the video, make sure you do invest in just one SSD. Everyone by now has a 250 gigabyte SSD. And if you don't, let me know in the comments because you definitely should. It's not only going to speed up your programs, but it's also just going to make your PC experience a lot more enjoyable. You're going to see faster load up times when you start your PC, faster load up times for your programs and faster load up times for your video games. Either get a 250 gigabyte SSD or a 500 gigabyte SSD, or if you can stretch your budget just that little bit further, you might as well get a PCIe one terabyte SSD. Lastly, your PSU or power supply unit. You can go wrong on this one. A lot of people tend to forget about the PSU and just chuck a 500 watt PSU on there and they forget that by the time they load all their accessories and peripherals onto their PC, they are draining the power source from the PC and your PC goes kaput. So you could go for a ballpark figure about 800 watt PSU and you'll be pretty much fine. So I hope this clears up any confusion you've had about what makes a PC a streaming PC. One last piece of advice is that there is a significant difference between a PC that's built for gaming and a PC that's built for streaming. If you haven't already taken that away from this guide, don't buy a pre-built PC that's built for gaming without looking at the specifications and checking what's exactly inside that PC. If you're looking to buy a streaming PC and you want that little bit of extra advice, why not chat to our 3XS experts? They'll be able to advise you on exactly what you need for your own streaming requirements. If this video has been helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below for more cool videos like this. And if you like me, check out me on twitch.tv forward slash ragedarling. See you in the next video. Bye.